If you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, I bet I know what you're thinking right now, because it was the same thing that I used to think. Oh no, not another nutcase post-tribber. He may know the Bible, but I know he's wrong. You're thinking the pre-tribulation rapture is the only correct view. Just for the time while watching this video, please discard all of what you were taught about the timing of the rapture. Yes, I do believe in the rapture, but the timing of it is the core of the dispute. Let's start with something easy. Let's review Revelation 16, verse 15. Behold I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on, that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. So, since this verse is smack in the middle of verses describing the preparation for the Battle of Armageddon, why is it here if the rapture happened before the beginning of the tribulation almost seven years before? The real reason that this verse is here is a hint that the rapture will happen soon, after the tribulation. When I was a pre-tribber, I was always puzzled why this verse was here. With a post-tribulation rapture viewpoint, it fits very nicely. Let's look at another verse that we all agree on that deals with the rapture. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 and 52. Behold. I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. We're agreed that the rapture will happen at the last trumpet. Okay, so when does that trumpet sound? The last trumpet is the seventh trumpet of Revelation 11, verses 15 through 19. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. The nations raged, but your wrath came, and the time for the dead to be judged, and for rewarding your servants, the prophets and saints, and those who fear your name, both small and great, and for destroying the destroyers of the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. There were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavy hail. The rapture of the saints is about to happen. Notice it says in verse 18, But your wrath came. This is speaking about the wrath of God against mankind. Again, this fits with a post-tribulation rapture perfectly. Let's look at another passage. Turn to Matthew 24, verse 31. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. I want you to be honest with yourself. Does this verse describe the rapture or not? Believe it or not, this verse alone absolutely destroys the pre-tribulation rapture viewpoint, although other verses do so too. How? Notice the context of when the rapture happens by going back to verses 29 and 30. Immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, 
and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Clearly this is in the last part of the Great Tribulation. The sun and moon are darkened, etc. The Son of Man, which is the Lord Jesus, is coming with the clouds of heaven, which are the heavenly believers. Notice the angels with the loud trumpet call. There it is again. It's the last trumpet. This is the plain reading of the scriptures. This also fits nicely with the post-tribulation rapture, but directly contradicts the pre-trib rapture position. As I stated before, there are many, many verses that support the post-tribulation rapture. Unlike the pre-trib rapture view, they don't need to be twisted and contorted to fit. You simply read and understand them. Let's look at another rapture passage. 2 Thessalonians 2 Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. In the first verse, the are being gathered together to him is speaking about the rapture. Then notice in verse 2 that Paul associates the day of the Lord with the rapture. This is another way of saying that the rapture will happen on the day of the Lord, which is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, let's jump a little ahead for a moment. Look at the man of lawlessness. Who is that? That is the Antichrist. Strangely, almost all pre-tribbers and post-tribbers agree on this. So, the rebellion is another way of saying apostasy, which, again, almost all pre-tribbers and post-tribbers agree on too. So, many people just read through this passage and don't think much about it. Let's go very slowly through verse 3. Don't be deceived by anyone. That day. What day? The day of the Lord, which concerned our gathering to him in verse 1. Will not come until the rebellion or apostasy comes first. Stop here. This isn't speaking about the world, but the Christian church falling from the truth. That doesn't mean there won't be true Christians, but as you can see, this process has already started and will only get worse. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. This is the Antichrist. So, what Paul is saying is that the rapture at the second coming will not happen until after there is apostasy in the Christian church and the Antichrist is revealed. When is the Antichrist revealed? Even pre-tribbers believe that he only be truly known for certain at the abomination of desolation at the midpoint of the tribulation. In Daniel, chapter 9 verse 27, it states that the Antichrist will stop the temple sacrifices in the middle of the seven-year tribulation. If you look up all the points I've made, the pre-tribbers all have responses for every one of them. The problem is the answers are twisted and don't fit with the plain reading of the scripture. If there's one thing that disgusts me in this life, it is preachers or teachers who read a Bible passage and then turn around and state the Bible doesn't say what it plainly says. They do this because they know that certain passages don't fit the puzzle they are putting together. Who does that harm? Everyone. 
we should allow the Bible to speak for itself and through it, the Lord to us. We're here to find the truth and not to follow some agenda. If you hold to the pre-tribulation rapture viewpoint and enter the seven-year tribulation period, you will be deceived, because you will think that this couldn't be the tribulation or the mark of the beast, because the rapture hasn't happened yet. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, then you also may like two of my other videos, Secrets of Reality and Intelligent Design. Check them out, and hey, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you enjoyed my videos, then please comment below. Also, if you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see, please add them in the comments section. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell to get notifications of future videos.